Hey guys, welcome. In this video, I want to talk about how to read crypto charts for absolute beginners. Basically, in this video, I'm just going to cover what they are and what people use them for, along with a few very basic terms. In the following weeks, I'll cover more specifically those individual terms, the very first things that you need to learn as you're just getting started out using crypto charts to trade. So, without further ado, Let's get started. Wait, before we start, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Also, I'll pick the best three comments to send a $15 trading bonus to. So, you wanna know how to make a good comment? Just tell me what you do or don't like about this video, what you'd like to see in the future, how we can improve, what you're looking to learn. Any sort of this feedback really helps out a lot because I wanna make content that's useful for you. So. Please let me know in the comments and you might just get that $15 trading bonus. All right, let's get started. Chart reading skills are part of overall technical analysis, which refers to an analysis method that looks at the chart's past performance in order to forecast future movements. Some of the primary indicators that technical analysts look at are the financial asset prices, moving averages, trend lines, and momentum. Pure technical analysis makes the assumption that the data available on the chart is enough to accurately predict the future movements of the asset. Of course, this is a very bold assumption that most analysts question. Therefore, technical analysis is usually, at least in part, paired with some form of fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis refers to the study of qualitative data, such as industry news, corporate announcements, government action, international affairs, legislative changes, consumer sentiment surveys, and so on. This is different than the information you get purely from a chart. In the context of cryptocurrency trading, fundamental analysis includes several more things such as ICOs, crypto platform news on social media, news on new funding obtained by a platform, news on hacks and security breaches, laws introduced by governments to regulate crypto, and so on. For a good crypto trader, it's almost always important to include some form of fundamental analysis along with whatever analysis you're doing purely from the chart. The reason for not relying solely on technical analysis is that no matter how strong the indicator you might see on a chart may be, it can still be misleading depending on what's happening out there in the real world. For example, once you understand technical analysis, you might see a strong reversal indicator during a downtrend. But if you pair that with external news resources, you might know that that project has recently been hacked and the downtrend is actually likely to continue. And therefore, that indicator that you see only on the chart may actually be misleading. All right, now back to the charts. Two critical pieces of information that traders should look at when analyzing charts are trend and momentum. For most traders, being able to correctly spot trends and momentum are enough to continue successfully trading for a long time. A trend is a upward or downward pattern that lasts from several days to several weeks to several months or even sometimes years. When the chart shows an upward movement pattern, that's called an uptrend. And conversely, if it shows a downward movement pattern, that's called a downtrend. The ability to spot emerging trends and identify when a particular trend is about to break is the essence of trend analysis. Long-term trends that last for entire months or more that the entire market follows are what we call bull or bear markets. In a bull market, everything is trending upward for a long time. Even if everything dips a little bit during the bull market, if you look at the long-term price pattern, if it keeps trending upward over that time, then it's a bull market. Conversely, in bear markets, everything trends downwards. Market-wide trends in the bull or bear markets they cause have a particular effect on the cryptocurrency markets because unlike the traditional stock market, crypto for now still heavily follows Bitcoin and to some extent Ethereum. So when you're looking at the crypto market, if Bitcoin's going up, basically everything's going up. And if Bitcoin's going down, basically everything is going down. The altcoins usually have more volatility than Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin is going up slightly, some of the altcoins might go up a lot. Whereas if Bitcoin is going down slightly, some of those altcoins might just crash into oblivion. But overall, aside from some unique cases that happen during any bear or bull market, the cryptocurrency trends usually follow Bitcoin. To give you an example of bull and bear markets, I'll show you this chart. 
This shows two significant bear and bull markets. The 2018 bear market was a year-long downtrend. And the raging bull market started in early March 2020 and lasted until the end of March 2021. These obvious long-term trends contain within them many different market movements, such as corrections or upswings. But these don't break the overall trend that lasts for several months. And just as we're able to classify these very long-lasting movements as trends, we can also classify shorter-lasting movements as trends as well, as long as they persist for at least several days. Momentum is also important when reading charts. This is essentially the measure of the speed of the price change during a trend. This basically means it measures the trend's force or intensity. You can think of it as a measurement of the trend's actual strength. And momentum actually has a pretty simple formula to measure it. This formula goes momentum equals current price minus price x days ago times x. The typical amount of time to measure, or the x in the formula, is 10 days. However, this could change depending on what kind of momentum you're trying to measure. Momentum is a positive or negative number that's plotted on the chart along with the candles. A large positive momentum indicates that the trend is strong and likely to persist, while a negative momentum may mean that the trend is about to break. Now, I did mention that the formula for momentum is simple, which it is, but also you don't actually even need to worry about the formula as the chart tools that you're using, such as the charts on Femex, have the momentum built in and you can just turn it on and off to view it then you don't have to go through plotting it for each point on your own. It'll just be done automatically. Trend and momentum are fundamental chart events that are very important in technical analysis. However, identifying, tracking, and analyzing these events isn't done with mere observation of the chart. Simple chart observation will only tell you about past events and won't help you predict anything about future events. There are a number of technical analysis methods that are used to predict the future direction of the trends on a chart. Of course, none of these methods give you a 100% assurance of what's going to happen next, and they'll often fail to inform you of the correct course of action. However, applied correctly and consistently over time will help you to understand how to make better trades and more accurately predict the future price movements. The most fundamental of these methods are the Simple Moving Average, or SMA, the Exponential Moving Average, or EMA, the Moving Average Convergence Divergence, or the MACD, and the Relative Strength Index, or RSI. We'll get into the Moving Averages, the MACD, and the SMI soon. But for now, let's leave it at that. So if you're just now getting into technical analysis, I hope that this helped as a brief little introduction. And please stay tuned for further beginner-level explanations.